What's going on, everyone? So, uh, we had an amazing few days, clearly. Uh, we were patient. We waited. We took high probability trades. And then we went long yesterday. At the open, everything today, the IWM was up 70%. GameStop was up. Apple was up 30%. Facebook was up 30%. The Spy was up 50%. At the open. So, please, you know, if there's any, <laughs> any doubt... Follow me on Twitter. I post all of my plays there completely for free live. Okay? So definitely just follow me on Twitter. Everything there is completely for free. Um, right here at Hamid Trades. And if you're still doubting, just follow me. You'll see. You'll be able to tell live. Like, oh, okay, is this guy lying? What is he saying in the YouTube videos? One day he's bullish. One day he's bearish. The thing about this channel is that we're traders. Yes, I understand from a macroeconomic lens, the overall stock market is bearish. The economy is bearish. The Fed is about to increase rates. We're about to stop quantitative easing, right? But from a trader's perspective, our goal is to make money every single day. We're agnostic to the market. If one day the market looks good, I'm going to buy calls. If one day the market looks bad, we're going to buy puts, all right? We have, that's how you have to, that's how you have to approach the market. If you don't do that and you just approach the market every single day, oh, the market's bearish. The market, oh, the, oh this move upward, this 20% move upward, it doesn't make any. If you were, if you didn't have an ego and you wanted to, you know, just accept the fact, okay, this looks very bullish right now. Zoom out and say, okay, I understand that, you know, uh, my bias is bearish in the long term. <clears throat> but right now, this setup looks very, very bullish. Are you going to put money to the side just because you want to fulfill your own ego and what you think should be happening? If that's the thing that you want to do, that is very, very self-sabotaging behavior. And you should really, really look into that because that affects the rest of your life as well, not just your trading. So right now, what this channel is for is for us to navigate the markets properly. One day we could be bullish, one day we could be bearish. We're not married to one bias, all right? So in today's video, we're gonna go over the SPY, the NASDAQ, the IWM, the 30-year bond, and the crypto market, all right? So without further ado, let's get started with the video. So number one, CPI data comes out at 8.30 in the morning, all right? And unemployment claim, I didn't even know unemployment claim. Unemployment claims and CPI data come out tomorrow. <clears throat> so if these numbers are favorable to the stock market, at this point, literally, it's just a 50-50 toss-up. So right now, we are long the market uh, with very small plays here. This is what we're long. We're long some SPY, QQQ, and IWM calls. And then I said, if I alert calls, you know, please, if you have a smaller account, just buy one. It's a 50-50 toss-ups, blah, 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 right? We made a lot of money today. So these calls, you know, if they don't work out, they'll be down 20%. Won't even dent the amount of profit that we made today. So that's not really a problem, but it was worth going long. And I'm going to explain why. So really, the CPI data comes out at 8.30 a.m. Um, but the stock market just still looked so bullish. All right. So the reason for that is because, number one, the SPY closed above major uh, resistance right not like completely bulldozed above it but it closed above this uh four fifty seven thirty six level and it also closed above this uptrend line which is very very good all right uh you can see that we closed above this one time back here but now we've come back so um we gapped up and yesterday I was explaining that this MACD right here, you could see the blue, um, the blue uh, number is the blue MACD number, right? So I was saying, you could see it was 3.14 before, <clears throat> and then it went to 2.94. So I was showing how when the MACD is falling lower, yet the price of the stock is green, super bullish. Clearly, you can see. Clearly, you can see that it's super bullish, right? We gapped up. Right now, 
we're still very, very bullish because it went from 2.94 to 3.47. Barely made a dent to the upside, yet we gapped up. So what that is telling me is that there's still a lot of firepower left to go to the upside, and there's still a lot more momentum to go, right? That's how it looks on the SPY, <clears throat> okay? So regardless of whether the CPI numbers were going to be bearish or not, to ignore this devilishly, like, really, really strong, like, momentum potential, I wasn't going to just sit on the sidelines, especially when we caught this move to the upside, we made a bunch of profit. It's worth uh, playing with profits, all right? So I hope you guys understand, because now you could also see in the RSI, the RSI is starting to move upwards a bit as well, all right? But yet the MACD has not. <clears throat> so that is very, very bullish. All right. So I want you guys to understand from my perspective what I was looking at. And um, that's the momentum. The momentum looks very, very strong. <laughs> if it continues on higher, it looks like the SPY can really test 465 again very soon. And uh, even if we don't touch, even if we don't make a, you know, a new all time high, us coming back over here would basically play into my um hypothesis of us potentially making a, a head and shoulders pattern and we can make this head and shoulders pattern into you know the fed meeting and you know if <clears throat> the that's if we don't make a new all-time high <laughs> if we make a new all-time high that's it like you guys have to subscribe to my channel and uh just take my word for it but really like again we're bullish until there is a clear defined macroeconomic change in the fed's policy <clears throat> until interest rates actually change and until quantitative easing ends we're gonna remain bullish all right and um this is what it is so yeah currently tons of momentum to the upside go watch my other video i was literally explaining the exact same thing the same thing still applies in today's video. All right. So there is the spy. <clears throat> now let's go ahead and take a look at the IWM. All right. So the IWM also. All right. So look, <clears throat> you could see how the MACD on the IWM is already moving upwards. All right. And the IWM was leading the spy in the NASDAQ. So whereas the spy, the MACD is still flat, yet we're moving on higher. Right. The IWM, the reason why I alerted long yesterday was because the IWM's MACD already started to shift upwards, which was a good precursor that the SPY and the NASDAQ would also follow. And it worked out beautifully. So this uh, inverse head and shoulders has now crossed above uh, the neckline, which means that now our target to the upside is going to be around 220. And, uh, you know, it coincides it would coincide pretty nicely with these trend lines over here. So if that is the case, that would be pretty interesting if that happens. But right now, the most immediate level of resistance on the IWM is going to be this 207.44 level. You can see that it coincides completely with this 618% FIB, as well as this downtrend, uh, down, you know, this downward resistance level. So this is going to be a very major level of resistance. And if we can plow through that, it's going to be really nice uh, for our calls. <laughs> and uh, the entire market is just going to really uh, push forward because the CPI numbers are something that everyone is really, really fearful of. And if those numbers come out favorable to the stock market, um, it's going to be amazing. Uh, so, yeah. Um, <clears throat> All in all, you know, that's the level of resistance. We are bullish on the IWM. You can clearly see that we're trade. We gapped up. We traded above uh, the neckline. We didn't even come back to retest or, you know, fill the gap, which is super, super, super bullish. Uh, it's something that, you know, was similar to what essentially we were doing sort of back here. And it, it was a few weeks oh, right here. Yeah. It was it's similar to what we were doing right here. On the spy, we barely, uh, we weren't even retesting any of the gaps, and that's very, very bullish. So, if uh, you know, this is a really, really good sign on the IWM. 
And uh, yeah, that's really it for the IWM. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the large tech stocks, uh, the 30-year bond, and the NASDAQ. All right, Apple. Um, we saw Apple yesterday. Uh, the MACD was falling, yet Apple was making a bull flag, and today, obviously, we gapped up. All right, very clearly, this is a very, very bullish move on Apple. Uh, the MACD is still falling lower. MACD is still falling lower, yet Apple is going higher. So that is ridiculous strength, okay? So that's like scary strength, actually. So, I mean, um, it would, I mean, it, that's, that's crazy strength. If there's no use, there's no possible way if you are watching these indicators for you to justifiably go short. So, I mean, if you watch my videos and you have the MACD settings similar to mine, it makes no sense. Well, uh, you can see the RSI is moving upwards, yet the MACD is still falling lower, guys. Um, this blue MACD line is falling lower. So that's, that's ridiculous. So Apple, I just want to show you clear strength. All right. Microsoft, clear strength. The MACD is flat. <laughs> the RSI is like starting to move a bit upwards. That's fine. So Microsoft closed really, really well. Uh, Amazon. Amazon stopped that resistance, um, but, you know, it had a huge rally off of earnings. That's completely fine. It didn't close bad, is what I'm showing, right? And then Google, ugh, one of the reasons why we went long yesterday was because Google found support. And clearly, you know, it gapped up, and uh, it, the MACD is also falling lower. So this is, this is very, very strong, guys. Um, I just wanted to really show you the large tech. Oh, Facebook. Facebook had a huge green day as well. Caught that as well. We caught the bottom. I alerted it at 217. So, yeah. So, so the large tech stocks are working out really well. All right. The 30-year bond. Um, so this is the next day. But it closed above uh, this 153.07 level. Um, so... It reclaimed levels of resistance and it closed above that level of resistance. So, you know, that is pretty bullish. Um, essentially, right now, the futures are down just a bit, which is completely normal in the after hours. Regardless, this movement doesn't really mean anything. Us being red right now in the uh, after hours and this bond price right now doesn't really mean anything. Uh, 8.30 a.m., we could be 5% green, but if the CPI numbers come out uh, bearish, then, you know, the market's going to tank. So, overall, what I wanted to show was that the 30-year bond closed above levels of resistance, right? Um, everything was basically showing lots of strength, and we were closing above resistance. Apple made a bull flag. It's still showing tons of momentum to the upside. Google was showing tons of momentum to the upside as well. And overall... Uh, super green, right? The NASDAQ clearly closed above um, this very important two zones here at two, uh, 362.50. Uh, and again, we closed above a major level of resistance at 366.55. I alerted that level on uh, Twitter. And it, we closed above all of the major levels of uh, resistance. So that's really, really good. Uh, the Nasdaq, you can see that the MACD is barely moving upwards here. Barely moving upwards, yet we gapped up. So very similar to the SPY, very similar to the IWM. This strength, you don't short, <clears throat> okay? Especially when everything is working out really, really well. Don't overthink it. Don't overthink the strength. Yes, I understand it's a bear market. Completely understandable. But when the equities are showing this much upwards momentum don't short it <laughs> don't try to catch a you know like a falling knife if you're doing it backwards right there has to be an analogy for that <laughs> like <laughs> there has to be an analogy for um trying to short strength if you guys know one please let me know in the comments but yeah you can see the clear strength in the nasdaq it really worked out man i mean this is like you could see the momentum is just super strong right now. The blue MACD line is barely moving upwards. 
barely moving upwards here. You can see that it's it increased from 1.39 to 2.08, yet we gapped up and moved up 7 points. So by that logic, if the MACD continues moving up, even if the MACD moved up to from... This was only a 0.7 increase. If the MACD moved up 2 or 3, the, the NASDAQ should be up here. All right, so that's why I'm saying that there's tons of momentum to the upside potential. And if the CPI numbers are wrong, uh, oh well, because the momentum to the upside is still... It's there, and it's there's a lot of it left uh, in the tank. So, yeah, man, that's uh, why I'm overall bullish on the market. And, uh, yeah, man, that's, that's really it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you.